eerily haunting true stories about remote abandoned locations rich in history. Come with us in our travels from state to state, if you dare. <laughs> Be the last time anybody sees us alive. I don't know where she has a hole in her fucking Hello? Gina, there is a beehive over there. Do you see that in the hole? Buckle up, buttercup. Welcome to 50 States of Madness. Because we record on current events, by the time the episode airs, more details may come to light. For the latest information, please check out our YouTube channel, where we will post under the description the newest information, or we may edit it into our videos. In the case of Danny Masterson and Ashton Kutcher, more details about what Kutcher did on the night of Ashley Erloren's murder have been posted by one of Masterson's victims. Please watch to read the latest post. (laughs) Welcome 50 States of Madness. Welcome. I'm Shannon. I'm Gina. Hi. And just a disclaimer today, because this episode might not be for everyone. Just saying we're not going off a script. We're not doing, (laughs) we're doing a shoot the shit episode. And there might be a few ums in there because you know what? Sometimes we um when we think. Sometimes we ah. Sometimes mm. Huh. I um a lot, but. Yeah. And we do a little bit of pausing. So just, you know, to throw it out there that if you are annoyed by some ums, this not might might not be the episode for you. And if you're annoyed, or any of them for that matter, <laughs> or if you're annoyed by any of, and if my, you find like the my need, language, if you find the need to comment and call us out on our ums, just don't don't comment. Just stop watching the video and move on. Thank you. But we thank might- you for adding to our comments, though, because I appreciate that. So Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. But this is a shoot the shit, so we're going to be just talking about some of the things in the headlines or some of the things that are, have been on our mind. Um, so really not before we start, particular. though, I want to read a comment. <gasps> yes. Okay, wait, hold on. I don't know. Am I excited about this comment? Uh, no, I just, th- I, I just think it's funny. Okay. I think it's, it's a funny comment. So I have posted the video. You know, we did a TikTok. Oh, yes. We did our TikTok and we got a really funny comment from my friend Tara who lives in Arizona. And so back when we, you probably remember this. So last October when our first episode came out, we went to Disneyland, we had dinner, the kids were there, everybody, right? The cake. So Jasmine, my daughter, her boyfriend had made a comment. Do you remember what that comment was? What he said about about my voice? No, I don't remember. He said that I sounded like a phone sex operator. Oh, I do remember. So my friend Tara <laughs> made this comment. <laughs> she said, "Me and McLovin, who is her husband, her name, her husband's name is Aaron, but we everybody for some reason calls him McLovin because he's a doctor." That's so. Cute. Me and McLovin listened to the Whaley House episode on our way to San Diego. He got you confused with a nurse friend of ours named Dana, whom I once told should be a sex phone operator because her voice was so smooth. Then she admitted at one time she actually was a very successful sex phone operator. He said, now I can see how Gina was a phone sex worker because her and her podcast partner have perfectly soothing radio voices. I agree, but I also had to inform him of his detrimental (laughs) mix-up. So I thought that was funny. Uh, so that is funny. Yes. So I have been told that um shout out Tara and McLovin. Thank you for yes, listening. Thank you. <laughs> but I have been told that when I take orders in the drive thru, you know, my all my colleagues can hear me, my coworkers yeah. at Starbucks. Yeah. And I have to repeat the orders. And when I first started, you know, I'm super excited. My voice is high. I'm like, so I would always like, you know, hi, welcome to Starbucks. What can I get started for you? And I would annoy everybody who has a headset on at my work. And one of um, the girls said, "Um, Shannon, can you like take that down a few decibels? (laughs) So I'm like, okay, well, I'm just going to have to talk really soft, right? So now now they say that I have a really good phone sex voice because I'm always like, hi, welcome to Starbucks. What can I get started for you? (laughs) That's wonderful. That sounds great. Would you like that hot or cold? (laughs) Do you want that blended or on the rocks? On the rocks. <laughs> double blended? Okay, double blended it is. What is double blended? 
it's some people like it double blended in the blender. Oh, like, like so the it's, frappuccinos. It's not so icy. Maybe, maybe it's not so crunchy. It's a lot oh, okay. smoother, but it comes out a little bit more watery. Oh, I, I would like, like mine half blended. Like chunkier. Yeah. Yeah. I don't even think you, don't even you drink like coffee. on the rocks. <laughs> I don't even drink You're coffee. on the rocks. <laughs> no. Yeah. So they, they've made that comment too, because when I go really low and deep and I get breathy. No, I don't. I don't try not to. <laughs> Anyways. So. Yeah. So anyway. Um, yes. Yeah, so today's, uh, this week's episode will be a shoot the shit episode. So yeah. we are actually Shannon is the one that, well, no, actually Shannon didn't bring it up. Mm-hmm. Um, her friend Kim brought it up. Yes. And so she suggested maybe we should talk about this since it's in the news. And so right here now, we are. Just a little background. Well, what she brought up was the murder of um, Ashley Ellerin. And it, for those of you who don't remember, it's, um, well, I'll get into that. But the reason why she brought it up and the reason why it's in the news is because of Danny Masterson. Because he just got convicted 30 years for rape. Right. And um, I don't know. He's the guy from that 70s show. That 70s show. And it was a really funny show. I liked that show. I never watched it a whole lot, but I did watch some episodes. And yeah, it wasn't, it wasn't my favorite, but I mean. I didn't tune in every week. Yeah. But when I did watch it, yeah, I thought it was funny. Yeah. It's a funny show. But um, so he was on that 70s show. And so he's in the news because he got sentenced to 30 years. And I don't know all the details. I just know he was convicted of two or three rapes, Mm -hmm. right? Um, mm-hmm. initially he had gone to trial and this is why it's a shoot the shit because we don't have all the details but originally he went to try he went to trial he's going to be charged with rape before either charges were dismissed or acquitted or whatever the reason he didn't get charged for those previous ones but then this one came out and now he, he got sentenced to 30 years in jail well as soon as he was sentenced there was a video that went around of him on the conan o'brien show yeah you you uh, you have no accent though. You have no Long Island accent that I can discern. Not really. I've been in LA for like ten years, mm-hmm. and it just goes away naturally, right? It, it goes away naturally, and then there's also certain words that there's nothing you can do about. Like my friend Bodie Elfman, he always teases me, and he says, "Hi, my name is Danny Masterson. Would you like to touch my balls?" <laughs> you know, you're doing now, an imitation of me because certain so words. Why you just are you can't asking people with. to do that? That's the more important question. I mean, you got them. <laughs> yeah, right, right. You know what I mean? Accent aside, everybody should grab. That's the more important thing. Exactly. <laughs> Um, I've heard about you, uh, and you'll be caught soon. I know you will. I will. And so um, it gets you thinking, like, you know, how we talk about the inner circles of Hollywood mm-hmm. and how people do know about other people in Hollywood and what yeah. they're doing and the cover-ups and, mm-hmm. you know, all the, you know. Yeah, everything's kept hush-hush. Yeah. And um, how people try to cover up I don't know necessarily but just become complacent maybe Mm -hmm. because they don't want they think it's going to affect them and their career well I think a lot of times too and I think it it happens in many jobs is you become numb to a lot of things yeah things happen so often that it becomes your normal and that's not okay yeah and a lot of times you know they're threatened their job is put on the line if you say this then yeah, you know. and in Hollywood, it's they'll blackball you. Oh yeah, like you won't get put on certain movies. Mm-hmm. You won't get called back. Yeah, you know. So I understand a certain degree of fear, but when it's blatantly right in front of you, mm-hmm. but also, I think when that '70s show around was around, like not that it's excusable, but I just don't think people took it as seriously. Like the. So it was kind of like the norm until the Me Too movement, which it shouldn't have been. Right. Absolutely. You know, it shouldn't have been. But I think kind of people who was in that circle and stuff, they kind of, especially the men, Mm -hmm. it was something that just- They got used to be able- Yeah. Even though it made them feel more comfortable or maybe they didn't participate. So maybe that was kind of their, well, I don't do it. Right. Reason, you know, but- Yeah. So I guess- after he was sentenced, Ashton Kutcher and Mila Kunis and a bunch of other people were asked to write the character witness letters um, before his sentencing. And they wrote these letters um, under the impression that they weren't going to get published. And my opinion is, I really don't think they should have. Because yeah. I think it's really going to make other people um, hesitate when they're asked to write character yeah, witness letters. Mm-hmm. I really think it should have been something just for the judge. I don't think right. it should have been public. public. 
um, that's just my opinion. If yeah. anybody else out there has a different opinion, please, you know, give it. Also, I think when you write a character witness statement, you're saying from your perspective. Right. You're not saying, hey, I agree that this guy did this. I I, I agree. That I, I don't. You know what I mean? Like, it's I, just I'm not interactions signing. that you personally have had with that person. Yeah. Like your relationship with that person. Yeah. So maybe Danny did not do anything offensive to, to them. To them. But there are certain things coming out on certain ways he talked about Mila when she, because she was only 15 when she was on that 70s show. Right. When she started. So certain comments that he made, certain comments that Ashton Kutcher made um, about Hillary Duff. Is in Lizzie McGuire. She also has an album out. Um, she's going to be in a movie called Cheaper by the Dozen. And she's one of the girls that we're all waiting for to turn 18. Along with the Olsen twins. You know, so all these little comments are coming out and people are being very critical because, mm-hmm. you know, he does, he's a big advocate for um, sex trafficking. Right. So. And that's probably, I feel, why this hit so hard. Yeah, why it came out is because of, you know, his work and involvement and all of that. His stance on it. Mm-hmm. But he, they did it from their perspective, but they did come out and apologize. A couple months ago, Danny's family reached out to us and they asked us to write character letters to represent the person that we knew for 25 years so that the judge could take that into full consideration relative to the sentencing. The letters were not written to question the legitimacy of the judicial system or the validity of the jury's ruling. They were intended for the judge to read, and we're sorry. But after that, he got attacked on Instagram, um, Ashton Kutcher. And so this one I probably might have to read exactly because I don't want to, like, flub no. up yeah. or anything. But um, there's an article here that I got off, and I didn't even know about this. My friend Kim sends me a text and says, hey, you need, because it's in the news right now, you need to do an episode on Ashley Ellerin. And just to give you a little bit of background about Ashley, Ashley back in 2001 Mm -hmm. was kind of in the Hollywood scene. She like kind of ran around in those circles. She wasn't an actress, right? Right. If, from my understanding, she just kind of Probably went to a somebody party. somebody dated or hung out with. With them, yeah. Hollywood. She was friends with people who knew people who knew people. So she was at a party one time and she briefly ran into Ashton Kutcher. This is before his um, Demi Moore days. And she kind of, they kind of flirted. And he said, hey, you know, maybe sometime we should get some coffee or something. So I guess later on down the line, and I don't even know exactly how much time passed, but he ended up calling her and asking her out on a date. She agreed to go on the date, and he was running late, so he called her, told her, hey, I'm going to be there around 10. She said, that's fine. But when he got to the house around 10, um, she doesn't answer the door. So he's looking around the house. He's touching. He's trying. And... This is me and my friend Kim. We went back and forth on this. It's just weird that if you really don't know anybody and it's your first date, would you be like trying to open up their doors and look in their windows if they didn't show up for a date? I guess it would depend on how well I knew them, like how much interaction I had had with them. Like it might have been their first date, but I don't know how. You know, honestly, I don't know either. You know, like if you talk on the phone to somebody on a regular basis and maybe it's just the first time you've gone out or if it's yeah. you know I, I guess it would just I, it would depend on how well I felt like I knew that person that's true you know so when he he tried to get in then he looked through the window and he saw a red stain on the carpet he thought it was wine so he ends up leaving because he thought he got stood up well it turns out um Ashley the next morning she was found murdered she was stabbed 47 times and the guy who did it actually stalked her. He was a neighbor who didn't live too far, and he was actually sentenced. But after the whole incident happened, Ashton Kutcher got nervous because he knew he was there yeah. the night that she was murdered, and he probably arrived right after she got murdered if the murderer wasn't still, still in the house. There, yeah. And so he contacted the police and let him know, like, hey, my fingerprints are going to be all over that place. Yeah. I have my fingerprints probably on the window, the door, the door everything. Yeah. So he got really nervous. So he did testify in a murder trial. She was slain in 2001 by a guy named Michael mm-hmm. Gio. He actually was accused of being a serial killer nicknamed the Hollywood Ripper. 
she wasn't his only victim. He had murdered three other women, and he's currently on death row in San Quentin. She, she was killed on February 21st, 2001. Wow, that, and it took eight years for it to go to trial? That was, no, that was 18 years. He was on the stand You said 2009? 19. Did I say nine? No, May 29th, 2019. Oh. That was... The trial of the people versus Michael Thomas. Did it take a long time for them to find him, maybe? The Hollywood Ripper. You know what? We might have to do an episode on that because yeah. there are three other victims for this guy. Yeah, maybe we can. Yeah. So, one of the women who accused Danny Masterson and was actually his ex-girlfriend comes out on Instagram after all this comes out with the character witness statements. They're pissed off at Ashton and Mila for making these statements about his character. Yeah. And they said that, you know, it's going to re-traumatize the victims because of what they said. And they're, they're apologizing. They had no, they did not mean to do it. Yeah, of course. Yeah. They were worried. They had an authentic concern about re-traumatizing Masterson's victim by calling him their role model. And by appearing to minimize one key aspect of the women's testimony, that their friend drugged them before attacking them. And that's what the women said happened. Danny would drug them before he raped them. Oh. One of the victims said it was incredibly insulting and hurtful that they wrote this. Another accuser, Chrissy Carnell Bixler, went further going on the offensive and telling Kutcher on Instagram story, you're just as sick as your mentor. So she actually writes this statement. Dear Ashton, I know the secrets your role model keeps for you. Ones that would end you. Did you forget I was there? You were on speakerphone that night you called Danny on February 21st, 2001. I heard everything. I heard the plan. She doesn't go on any further saying anything. Yeah. I don't know what the plan is. Um, I was going back and forth with Kim. Like, uh, did he, do you think he wanted to dump the body because his fingerprints were over? Did, was he, did he want to go back and wipe yeah. away his fingerprints? What was the plan? I don't think he had anything to do with the murder. I mean, the other right. guy is obvious. He, He's guilty for it. He's in yeah. prison for it. I don't think Ashton had anything to do with it. They were young kids. Maybe there was some talk. I mean, I can I mean, assume like oh, my fingerprints are everywhere. Should I go back and wipe it all could down? Could you imagine though him finding out? You just think that you just got stood up. Big deal. And then to come to find out that this person's been murdered. I can't imagine like what's going through his mind. Like, oh my God, I was just a, at this person's house and like. I was there, my DNA's there. everywhere. I touched this, I touched that. Like, who knows? Like, probably not remembering everything I did or, you know, yeah. whatever the case may be. Not that it makes it okay for him to say, well, I, don't, I don't even know. Like, you know, obviously she's not coming out and saying. Yeah, what it is. What it is that he said. She went this far. Why don't you just say it? <laughs> yeah, so that makes me feel like, I mean, it could go a bunch of different ways because, of course, I'm sure his victims are completely traumatized. Oh, yeah. Which is another reason why I feel like those things should stay hush-hush, that those should those statements, yeah. those character witness statements should not be released. For any trial, for any murder, because case, regardless. Regardless, like, those people are going to be traumatized Yes. They did not have the same relationship that Ashton Kutcher and Mila Kunis had, obviously. So that right there, you're kind of <laughs> setting yeah. them up to fail by releasing that. But do you think that, I mean, it's a possibility that she could have said that. Like, my thing is, why did you wait 18 years to say that? Are you like, saying that yeah. because you're upset now? Because now you know his feelings and he's saying, like, oh, that was my mentor? You didn't say anything because maybe it is something that could be incriminating. Mm -hmm. And so you didn't want to get in the middle of that or incriminate True. True. Ashton. But I honestly, I think it, my opinion is it's something as innocent as oh, maybe we need to wipe down, go back and wipe down the windows and, but by that point though they didn't well no you know what i'm going to take that back the thing is is he did it that night the night she was killed not the not when she was discovered 
who who so what wait, are they talking wait, he about did what? When, was, when was he when, wait, what did well, you just say when he was the what? phone call made well when he called danny and he was on speaker i said i don't know february 21st i gotta look that up if we can look it up February 1st, was that the date her body was found or was that the day she was actually murdered? Because uh, that would make a difference on the phone call in, in what I thought you, I thought you said that he wiped the fingerprints off that night. No. And I was like, okay, guilty. No, 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 no. <laughs> like, I meant guilty. like, was he talking about it? You know, but if he was talking to them that night, like I know what the plan was, the night he was supposed to pick her up, my conversation with Kim went somewhere to another extent where did him and Danny talk about drugging and raping girls? Right. You know, that's where it maybe, went. Like, yeah, maybe it wasn't something specifically about the murder. This lady, maybe it was just in general. Just in general. I know the plan mm -hmm. could be as simple as, oh, did Danny provide you with the roofies? Yeah. You know, something like that. Yeah, it could like be that. anything, yeah. Um, has Ashton drugged and took advantage of girls? Maybe not necessarily thinking it was anything wrong, just to relax them, yeah. make them more fun, and, woo, you know, kind of party drugs with the girls. I mean, who knows? All that stuff goes on. But and what I wonder if... What secrets? Does, does Ashton Kutcher have a history of doing this kind of stuff, or no? No. Okay. I don't think there's... I don't know much I about mean, him. Not that I've heard, read, even when I was. He's not like a Bill Cosby. Not yet. Okay. <laughs> okay. Not, okay. You know what? It's funny, though, how many men that you start finding out did this, like how common it was yeah. in Hollywood yeah. for them to drug women. Mm -hmm. That's scary. Mm -hmm. And I'm yeah, just happy I didn't get into that field <laughs> because Lord knows that. <laughs> It was something You'd be that a wanted really, woman. <laughs> thank you. I mean, my acting skills are superb. I got my singing down, my dancing, your rapping, acting, my rap. Oh, God. I am like, yeah, you're, what's you're it? all over. What's it? I'm a EGOT waiting to happen. A what? An EGOT. What's that? An Emmy, Grammy, Oscar, and Tony Award winner. Oh. You <laughs> There's some, wow. some okay. new EGOT. Okay. And okay. Waiting to happen. Okay. You yeah. are. So, yeah. Just wait for her to make her I, debut. I know. <laughs> we're just, we're still we're waiting. We're just waiting. <laughs> yeah. For we're my still, break. We're still waiting. There was another story that you wanted to cover this evening, I, too. I do, kind but of I don't. We Not can talk quite. about it a little bit, but I kind of, I, I'm going back and forth about it because I want to go a little more in depth, but then I don't, but then I do, but then I don't because... The more that I research it, the more I'm realizing how controversial I find this that is. It's a lot of our, a lot of the stories that we get into, we find that it's like this rabbit hole that, yeah, and it's so hard to condense the information mm -hmm. and then you get it in your brain and you don't know how to organize it. And it's well, like, I have, I bought two books that I want to read, which okay. won't take me very long. No. Um, but I want to talk about, uh, Adam Walsh, the disappearance and the murder of Adam Walsh, John Walsh's son from America's Most Wanted. Yes. And there is a lot of speculation that he was a victim of Jeffrey Dahmer. A lot of, con um, what is it called? Conspiracy yeah, theories. Yeah, there's a lot of conspiracy theories. There's, there's some theories out there that it wasn't even his body, or not his body was never found. It was just his head that was found. But that it actually wasn't him it wasn't adam walsh so there's there's so much out there that it's kind of like i don't yeah i mean you basic, need all the information. basically what happened is he went, went to a mall with his mom to a sears in florida went in his mom was uh over in one area he said he wanted to go play video games he went over his mom, and it, it was apparently a store that they visited frequently. He had done this in the past. She went back over there after leaving him there for a few minutes. He was gone. So, so parents' horse nightmare. Yeah. I don't know. A week or two later, his head was found. Only his head. His, the rest of his remains have never been found. So there's just a lot of controversy out there about who did it. 
they actually had a guy who they said did it. Jeffrey Dahmer actually was questioned about it while in prison. He said, no, I have no connection to this. And what would stop me from confessing? Like, I'm already now, in here. Yeah. Why would I not? Why would I not confess? He was living in Florida at the time that this yeah. happened. So and he was known to grab young kids. It, it falls like kind of into his profile, uh, you know, the decapitation, the whole thing. Yeah, um, but not the way you he lured him out because he never really went to the he would would he go to the the malls to get kids? Well, I I I I don't know. I no. I mean, no, I don't think so. He, but I think everything else kind of falls into line. The way he was murdered, and and I know like when these things happen, people just reach like mm-hmm. you know. But there's it does it does make you think like okay, he's already in prison. If he did it, why wouldn't he just say he did? Yeah. Because I feel like he was kind of the person who want that would like he would think that would glorify him. Like that would be like something like, oh, my God, yeah. a big deal that would get him in the headlines <laughs> once <laughs> again. So. But I don't know. Maybe he wouldn't. Maybe he would just want them to keep looking. And I, I, I who knows? Yeah. I don't know. He but could have been having a lot of problems because, I mean, he was murdered in prison. Exactly. So, I mean, imagine if he admitted to that. I yeah. mean, he was probably having issues and problems in prison. And then if he would yes. admit to that in there, ooh, his death would have came way sooner. Way sooner. Yeah. So, yeah, I, I don't know. But I would, if, if anybody has, like, any comments or, you know, whatever theories that you've heard or something but it's gonna it's gonna take a little while but I do I want to research this more in depth just to get all the different theories and all you know there's just so much information out there about it and I do want to read these books just to see like what's out there and obviously on cases like this like Adam Walsh and like when we were recording with Dan the other day you know he's like oh you guys have you guys touched on the man on you know, Charles Manson. Manson. And we were like, no, like, I feel like big, huge cases like Ted Bundy and, and stuff like that. There's so much information out there that it's just so hard to do it in like a 45 minute to an hour episode. Yeah. And there's like, that's a full time job to just sit there and try to go through all the evidence and everything like that. Um, People spend years to write that up. I mean, essentially, we yeah. just be regurgitating other Everybody else's stuff. work because yeah. it, which which we do anyways. I mean, all you know, all truth aside, we we gather information off the internet, out of books. Yeah, you know, we kind of that's how we podcast gather movies, yeah. whatever. We just kind of piece it together and try to give it to you in a brief little snippet. But that's just these a people huge, are yeah. I mean, you know, yeah, the Jomini Ramsey huge. Um, just well, it's just years of different things that have happened. Well, and those are are kind of you know the episodes that we do a shoot the shit on we've done Mm -hmm. we've talked about the new evidence coming out in the John Benet Ramsey case and then we did do Natalie Holloway uh Scott Peterson Scott and Lacey Peterson stuff like that so I I mean there's a there's a one that I've been wanting to do but it's the same thing it's it it's so much information I want to do the Lake Waco Mm -hmm. murders about three individual three kids mm-hmm. who were murdered um in texas near um lake waco and but there's a lot of controversy on who went to jail for it and there's and been books that written on out. that and there has been it, and it's just a lot of information yeah really really great book that um i'm listening to that talks about it and there's a lot of information about the victims but to make it so concise to fit into our yeah. one hour mm-hmm. it's very difficult and i've been working on that for four or five months yeah. i keep telling her like okay maybe next week okay maybe next week yeah because i just feel like with it, something like, like that though that would be worth it yeah. to do um but with all these other cases i feel like they're just so well known that majority of people already know yeah like we what can happened just, we can just say oh hey you know the case against you know John Bonet Ramsey. Everybody's like, okay, they're familiar with the happened. name. Yeah, I know what happened. Yeah, okay, what are you going to talk about? You know, kind of our yeah. opinion or whatever. But and yeah. I don't know if people are familiar with the Adam Walsh. Yeah, you I, know, I know. I'm not familiar exactly about the whole kidnap. I know why 
his father was on America's Most Wanted. I know what led to that because right. of his son going missing yeah. and being yeah. murdered. But I don't know all the details on what the police did, what happened right. days following the kidnapping. I don't know any of that. That's all yeah. blank space to me. Yeah. So I think, so. you know, we'll do an episode on that once. Did that I'm happen in the 70s able too? Able to. No. 1981. 81. Okay. Um, so if you guys have any... Uh, stories that you would like us to cover to touch on even to shoot the shit if you want yeah. us to give our opinion on anything feel free to comment um or if there's you know different um stories that you want us to cover it doesn't necessarily even have to be true crime no. if there's any haunted places uh that you want to know if we visited or you would like us to visit or something like that that's you know, semi close to the Los Angeles area, we would be more than happy to check it out. Um, or just any stories that you want us to cover, let us know, yeah. and we'd be more than happy to do that. Awesome. Yeah. So that was our shoot the shit episode. Yeah. Thank you for joining so, us. Yeah. Thank you for joining us this week, and um, we will catch you guys next week. Thank yeah. you to our Patreons. Um, follow us. Yeah. Follow on all us. social media platforms. Fifty States of Madness. Check out our merch. Yes cute um, stuff yeah we got t-shirts tank tops hoodies not Cups. that one yeah we had yeah. oh yeah we have a super cool mug i really i need to get one yeah i don't even have the tank top but i did <laughs> see one i did see one in person my friend from work roxy she Hi, wore roxy. It, yeah she cute. wore it to work you the sent other me a day picture. yeah so yes. cute and then the beanie yeah jenna sent me a picture oh, of her so in her beanie so, uh, but Roxy was telling me that the tank top material, it, she, she loves the Racerback tank tops. Like that's like her, her jam. And so she was telling me that it was the same material, the same brand as the ones that she always buys. Oh, good. So they're really good quality. They're really soft and they look, it looks super cute on I'm her. I'm happy to hear that. Yeah. So. We're not about cheap up in here. We're very bougie. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we got the good stuff. Yes. So, yeah. Thank so, you so we much. will um, catch you guys next week. Yeah. Be safe. Bye. Bye. Bye.